Today's video is um, trying to find a solution for a problem that we've got in the home but also a possible solution for when we're in the van as well in regards to broadband connection or internet connection. Uh, where we live uh, we, um, we can't get super super fast bro fibre broadband. We can get fibre broadband but it ain't the quickest. Uh, we've tried uh, three different providers so far um, and they're all coming up with pretty much um, the same speed results uh, which is really low. Um, we are getting probably less than 10 megabits per second um, on a normal 2.4 gigahertz uh, Wi-Fi signal um, and even when we go to a 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi signal we're getting less than probably 30 um, on a good day. So on a normal day, we're probably getting about 23, maybe 24, uh, which is enough to, to cause us issues if we connect loads and loads and loads of devices, uh, which you do. In our home, we have Alexa, um, we have mobile phones, we have tablets, we have computers, we have smart TVs, we have everything. Um, so we kind of were looking for a different solution uh, when we, it's been really bad we've actually tethered all the devices to our mobile phones and gone off a Wi-Fi um, hotspot from the mobile phone so that kind of solves one issue but we're using the data up on our phones and you know if one of us leaves the house then the other one has to tether off theirs and it becomes all really complicated so we started to look down the route of could we get a mobile, pro mobile phone provider who who could give us the speeds that we're kind of looking for um, then we hit upon a snag uh, a snag being that most mo most MiFi Wi-Fi boxes so MiFi what I mean by that is that it will take a mobile sim and it's a Wi-Fi box um, most of those MiFi boxes um, don't have an Ethernet connector and an Ethernet connector is one of the important things because we have a hive, uh, we have security cameras, we have loads of things that connect to the router via Ethernet. So whatever we chose had to have a, an Ethernet connector. Now what we chose is this. So this is the Netgear Nighthawk M1, otherwise known as an MR1100. Um, nice sleek unit. Um, it's very mobile, uh, if you take the back off, it's got a battery in it and the battery is of a decent size. Uh, as you can see, the battery is um, a 5040 milliamp hour capacity battery um, and I've had it on test, I've had it on um, a bit of a test so it's been running on standby and it's also been running being used um, and I've got two days out of a single charge which I think is really good however uh, if we're using it in the house um, we're going to connect it via the power supply which is a USB-C uh, which you can see there um, in the van we'll probably connect it the same way through the USB-C but this is something that we can use in the house and we can also use in the van as well. Um, so it will this solve our problem? Well, yeah, it will because it's got an Ethernet connector. Now, yes, fair enough, it's only got one Ethernet connector. However, uh, we can connect um, network switch units to it, which are probably anywhere between £10 and £20 uh, to buy a network switch depending on how many ports you go for um, and that will connect all our Ethernet devices to this one Ethernet port and it will work perfectly so that kind of solves that issue uh, it's also got a USB connector on it which means that we could plug anything in from like a, a USB hard drive so a portable hard drive so anything that's connected to this can be accessed by anything that's Wi-Fi connected to this. Does that solve the problem? Yeah, it does. Um, this is going to be used indoors, uh, in the house. Um, is the is the signal going to be strong enough? Uh, well, if it's not, 
um, it's kind of got these two little rubber feet and if you pull the rubber feet away you'll notice that it's actually got two aerial connectors so you can actually plug external aerial into it as well so that'll be handy in the van because obviously if this is going to be a permanent setup in uh, the next van that we have because the next van is obviously going to be a bigger van um, and we're going to be in it for longer uh, we're going to be able to fit an external aerial um, I don't think we're going to need an external aerial and unless we're going somewhere very very remote however the options there if we need it um, the actual unit itself palm size so it doesn't take up a huge amount of room um, no other buttons on it other than the one button on the top now the one button on the top when you press it is the power button but it's also the menu button as well so it'll, it's used for scrolling through the limited menus that are on this and when I say limited menus it's because it connects to an app on either the mobile phone or the tablet uh, which I'll show you in a moment or two that's the reason why I've got the tablet out because the tablet um, is something that I'm going to use for demonstrations so as you can see that's fired up now and I'm sure you can see that screen now it's a really nice screen over on the left hand side here um, that's a gimme pointer here uh, this is the battery indicator so currently we're running on battery and it's fully charged it took probably about an hour and a half to fully charge uh, the blue flashing light you can see means that it's connected to the network currently at the minute it's on network 3 so you can see network 3 there that's the signal strength uh, and it's flicking between 4G and a moment ago it was on 4G plus it says there's no devices connected so far I've got a, a, a pay as you go sim in here at the minute uh, and it's a 20 gig sim so so far I've used 1.3 gig of a 20 gig sim and there's 26 days left the reason for the 26 days is that you could be on an actual contract um, and you can put in the date of when the contract rolls over so if you've got a limited amount of, of minutes per month um, you can actually say right I've got 60 gig to use in this month and the date for it rolling over is going to be the 5th of June so on the 5th of June, it'll roll over to the next month. It'll tell you bit by bit exactly how much you've used. Uh, and it is only estimated data. Uh, over on this side here, this bar that you can see here, this is how much data you've used out of your allowance. So if you're on unlimited data, which we will be eventually, this will be full scale all the time. Because obviously, you're never going to run out of data so that's the first screen and then if you press the button it takes you to the next screen now this is a dual band which means that it works off 2.4 gigahertz and 5 gigahertz as well now it does tell you the password so if you forget the password obviously i'm going to change the password at some point because i think one two three four five six seven eight isn't the best secure password in the world uh, however uh, it tells you the password in case you forget it and if you go to the next one, it tells you the 5 gigahertz password. And then if you click it again, it turns it off. So there are your three basic menus of which you control with this one button on the top. Everything else is done through the app. So I'm going to fire the tablet up and then I'm going to show you the app. But I'm also going to show you some speed tests that we've done with this using it's an app on the phone. It's called Speed Test. Um, and these are the results that I've done. So these results are all from the same server. I made sure that I connected directly to the same server to get a true picture of what it is. So um, I'll go through the, the speed results as it stands right now. Um, this is my home broadband so as you can see um, I'm going to blank that out there but this is my provider um, and currently on a 2.4 gigahertz connection I'm getting 9.5 millibits per second 
download and I'm getting a 5.35 millibits per second upload. Now that's on a 2.4 gigahertz uh, frequency. If anyone's un in, unsure as to the, the difference between 2.4 and 5 gigahertz, 2.4 gigahertz has a much longer range, whereas 5 gigahertz is a smaller range. So 5 gigahertz will give you a faster speed, but it'll give you a smaller coverage in your in your house in the area of your router whereas a 2.4 gigahertz will give you a much wider range but a slower speed so at 2.4 gigahertz it's 9.55 upload and 5.35 download now if i put my home broadband onto 5 gigahertz it goes up to 226.2 millibits per second and 5.75 millibits per second upload so that's a two point uh, that's a twenty six point two upload and a five point seven five download. So definitely more than double the speed for download from the two point four to the five. Now this is the test that I did on the my, the Netgear M one, and as you can see, Network three um, and upload speed the download speed has suddenly shot up to 35.6 millibits per second and an upload speed of 11.4 so definitely even on the 2.4 gigahertz setting it's actually quicker than my home broadband on 5 gigahertz now this is what really shocked me i went on to the 5 gigahertz band on the netgear m1 and all of a sudden my download now shoots up to 79.2 millibits per second and a 10.8 upload. Now to give you a bit of a um, an idea of, of how that transpires to another network, I'll get my mobile phone. My mobile phone's on EE um, and I'll run the speed test on my mobile phone to see what speed I'm getting on there. <laughs> Now here's my mobile phone and as you can see it's on Network EE there and we're using the same server to check it against to give us a decent result so if now cl I'll click go now this is using the mobile phone um, and it's on EE and we're getting a 28.6 download and a 2.75 upload. That's straight through the phone. If we were going to use this as a hotspot, that's the kind of speeds that we would be looking at. So I don't know if you can see this screen now. I'm just going to give you a brief overview of the spec. And this is straight off um, the Netgear website. Um, it's a 4G LTE CAT 16 mobile broadband. Uh, downloads of up to 1 gigabits per second, uh, which is as fast as you ever want. Uh, Multi-device Wi-Fi sharing connects up to 20 devices, one USB 2 and one micro SD. I don't know if you noticed when I took the back off the, the M1, it, you could see there was a micro SD card in there. I'll show you that when I go into the app. Uh, 1 gigabit Ethernet port, so anything we connect to the Ethernet port on the M1, is going to be at one gigabit. It's a 5040 milliamp hour battery, which I showed you earlier. Provides all day continuous use or charge a USB device. You can actually use this as a battery power bank. So if your mobile phone's going low, plug your USB lead into there, that into the bottom of your phone, and this will charge your mobile phone. Like I say, I've had this on standby, uh, connected two devices, and I've got the best part of two days out of it. I'm guessing if you're using it, constantly you're going to get a reduced time available to you for the battery um, but certainly on the standby it's lasted for a good two days it's also got a 2.4 inch color lcd screen area i bought this off ebay um, and I, I won it on an auction so i got it nice and cheap however it is an expensive device and you need to be aware of that if you're going to buy this device from Amazon, I'll put the link in the description below. But if you're going to buy this device brand new from Amazon, you're looking at the best part of £294. Now that is very expensive. However, if you are in need of the Ethernet port, then 
yeah, it, it's it's kind of needed, especially if you want to connect more than twenty devices to it. Um, I mean, you you total up how many devices you're currently using in a normal household. You've probably got three or four mobile phones, probably equal amount tablets. You're talking laptops, um, any smart devices that you've got connected. You can soon top up twenty devices. Maybe not in a van, but definitely in a house, you could easily amount to 20 devices so is it ticking all the boxes yeah it only has one ethernet port so how do we go about that well we use one of these uh, which is this is a five gig uh, five port gigabit ethernet network switch which means that you can connect five devices to this and that's nine pounds 69 from amazon if you want the metal version it's 20 pound does the same job it's just in a metal case like I say, this one's got a better picture, so you can have five devices connected to this one. These, you can get an 8 port, you can get a 20 port, you can get as many ports as you want for this. So this works, that works, great. What else? It has an app. So let's have a look at the app. So this is the Netgear app that connects to this. Now the first thing that you come across is this screen here. It tells you straight away your usage. How many days left you've got uh, this session use, usage which is 48.87 that's from the minute that I turn the unit on so this unit's been turned on for 16 minutes and in that 16 minutes I've used 48.91 megabytes it's on carrier network 3 and it's 4G plus and looking at that I've got two bars out of five battery is 100% and this when you scroll it up tells you uh, all the information that you kind of need so if I take that all further this is the 2.4 remember it's dual band so this is a 2.4 gigahertz band that's the network name what would Gordon do uh, the password if you want to see the password you click on that and it shows you the password it also tells you at the bottom here how many devices are connected to each band so you could have three or four devices connected to 2.4 you could have three or four devices connected to 5 gigahertz I've got two connected to 5 gigahertz I've got this tablet and I've got my mobile phone so if you scroll across that's the 5 gigahertz one same again if you press that that eye there it shows you the password and it shows you how many devices you connected that's your simple look at screen now if you scroll that and you bring it down you've got all these other screens here now so you've got Wi-Fi screen this shows you uh, 2 gigahertz so you can have it working off 2 gigahertz only, uh, 2.4 gigahertz only or 5 gigahertz only or dual band I leave it on dual band in here you can also where the little symbol is there the pen it means that you can adjust things so I can change the network name so I could have the 2.4 gigahertz band labeled what will Gordon do 2.4 I could also change the password and you can change the the um, security settings on it and the channel settings then you go to secondary Wi-Fi uh, this I've named what will Gordon do 5G um, and you can change the password and same again all that you can also share the Wi-Fi info if you've got a guest in your van or somebody who's bought a new mobile phone and not sure how to set it up you can share the Wi-Fi info with them you can also Wi-Fi QR code so they can actually go and, and use the, the QR code to get the information that they want uh, you've got a guest Wi-Fi so if you click on guest Wi-Fi you can enable that and people can connect to it um, to use use your network connection but a guest Wi-Fi if you don't want them to have the proper password uh, devices I've got two devices set on this at the minute I've got my mobile phone and I've got the tablet you can also block people and you can allow people uh, messages I'm not sure what this function is I've, I've looked on the help forums and I'm guessing somebody said that this is for if you put a mobile sim in here that has uh, the ability for uh, it's got inclusive text messages you can actually send text messages via the app through this to wherever 
um, and it says there new message delete all and close so I will close that so you can get text messages you can receive them and you can also send them uh, then you've got my media now this is not just the media on the mobile phone this is all the media on the SD card so this is the SD card that's in here so there's four pictures on there and you can click on any of them and look at the pictures now anyone who's connected to the to the the M1 the Netgear M1 can also access them pictures you can also upload stuff to it you can make new folders uh, you can select all refresh paste anything that you would normally do to move data around then you've got power now this is to either reboot the mo the mobile router or power off the mobile router so if you were sat on the sofa and you couldn't be bothered going over to turn it off you can actually power it off from the app then you've got another screen uh, the, you've got security so you can set up parental controls and you can also set up sim security sim security is uh, you require a sim pin every time you power the unit on so it's just it's added security uh, you've got a network map this tells you what network you're connected to there's your router and then it'll tell you how many devices you've got connected so it's just telling you now if you had things connected to the USB or you had things connected to the Ethernet that would show up on that map as well then you've got storage which is the SD card now this will give you a brief overview of what the card is so this is a 30 what well, I know it's a 32 gigabyte card that's in there so what's available is 29.71 um, and I'm, I'm using less than 1% so it's showing 0% I can even eject it so if I want to safely remove the card from the M1 I just click eject and it's safe to remove it and then over here uh, we've also got Arlo now Arlo's on there because uh, we have Arlo security cameras about the property so if we wanted to we could actually use this as the Arlo receiver for the cameras uh, you've got settings in here you can do all your general settings your network setting notifications Wi-Fi firmware web admin rate view it's all the usual you know all the usual settings that you would expect that you can change now if you go into there it's LCD language screen brightness um, change passwords enable DLNA anything to do with the settings uh, network is uh, to do with you can change the network so if I put a net uh, an EE sim in there I could go and change the APN settings to EE it does it automatically but it also means that you can do it manually if you want to uh, notifications uh, so you can have a notification for low battery data usage uh, approaching exceeding new messages new software update it's all your notifications Wi-Fi uh, this is where you can set it up um, it's more in depth than what I showed you earlier where you can select either 2.4 or 5 or dual band you can also change the Wi-Fi range uh, I've got it set on medium at the minute you can have it set on long uh, sleep so how many minutes you want it to go uh, to actually go where the screen turns off uh, and WPS so all the settings are in there now the last screen is data usage and this just gives you a basic look of what data I've used how much data is left uh, data limit so I know that on that page you go sim there's 20 gig on it so I've manually set that using that edit button to 20 so and I've set the data limit to gigabytes um, if you were on a pay monthly sim then you at this point here you would say um, what day it starts uh, and and how many days it's use, use how many days you've got left to use it would then be calculated on the screen data usage alert and reset and that is pretty much everything for the app um, is it easy to use yes it is very easy to use 
Some have said that it's a negative because he doesn't have touch screen. However, I think that's a positive because you've only got one button to control it and that's the button on the top. I think he, I think they've nailed it. Um, the downside that I can see with it, you can only have it flat. When I first bought it off eBay, um, I looked at these two rubber feet on the bottom and thought, great, that's for it to stand up. You know, that's, that's for it to stand up. But the connections go in the bottom, so you can't have it standing up because of the connections. So it's got to lie flat. Now, I'm guessing when we put it in the van, I'm going to put some Velcro on the back and some Velcro on the, on the cabinet and then just Velcro it wherever we want it. The battery life on it is really good. However, can I see us using it on battery? No. And what we've also realised is that if you're having it plugged into the mains via the USB-C, you don't actually have the battery in. If you take the battery out, it will run off the USB-C only. Now, the only problem with that is that if you have a power cut, obviously it's going to turn the power off to this and turn this off. So you're probably better off leaving the battery in because it's going to charge the battery and then once the battery is charged it will run straight off the USB C. If you like this video please hit the thumbs up um, and if you want to see more videos uh, click the subscribe button. Uh, we're trying to do one video a week. Um, sometimes it's not always possible because I am still working from home however it keeps me occupied. So while you guys are still watching I'll still carry on making. Thanks for watching. See you next time.